my fellow warriors. Welcome to the Warrior Athletica channel, where today's topic of discussion is detoxes versus macronutrient-based diet planning. I have been a personal trainer for over 20 years. I have coached hundreds of clients all the way from lifestyle changes through the bodybuilding stage, and I can tell you in my personal experience and my client's experience that macronutrient-based diet planning is the best, most long-term sustainable plan for life. Detoxes, on the other hand, are often short-term solutions. Now, when should somebody do a detox, if they should do a detox at all? Sometimes people have a horrible diet and they know it, and they need something to basically kick them in the ass and make them aware of what they're eating. So they might pursue something extreme, such as a detox. Now, why do I call it an extreme? Well, I just came from a meeting where several of the members of this group that I was at were undergoing a detox and the supervisor or the leader of the detox was there as a member of this meeting as well. And basically these people were drinking hot lemon water because they were restricted from caffeine and they were basically just eating uh, fruit the entire time. And while I give them credit for being on this detox and trying to change their diet lifestyle, I will say detoxes are not a long-term sustainable solution. Again, if you want to give your digestive system a break, if you're eating very poorly and you feel like you need a break um, from your current lifestyle, maybe you eat excessive sugar or unhealthy fried foods or a lot of salt, and you're just feeling run down or your hormones are out of whack and you just feel just sluggish and your digestive system is having a lot of issues, a detox may be the right thing for you. Uh, or if you have a allergy that you're trying to figure out, oftentimes they suggest a food elimination diet and then reintroducing certain foods to see if that's what's causing digestive issues with you. But again, a detox program is more of a, a short-term solution to either try and figure out what's wrong with you or to get you more aware of what you're eating. And then oftentimes I would like to tell you or you know inform you of pay attention to who is selling these detox programs. I mean, you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to learn how to fast, basically. And you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to uh, learn what you need to cut out. Basically, you just go on a fast and you could research that any, on Google for free. You don't need a, a doctor or a naturopath or anybody to bring you through a detox uh, when all the information is out there for free. But again, I would suggest that you look at what they're trying to sell you and what their after aftercare plan for you is. Because once you go through the detox and you've suffered and now your palate has changed and maybe you um, your brain fog is gone and you've given your kidneys and your liver and your digestive system a break, again, what is your long-term solution and what does this person, doctor, naturopath, whatever, trying to tell you or sell you afterwards? What is their long-term solution? And if it involves more horrible suffering or excessive restriction, it is not long-term sustainable. Because I can tell you that I have come across hundreds of people who have done and completed detox and fasts and grapefruit diets and horrible restrictive diets, and they could either go complete opposite the other way, like going either going back to their original lifestyle or getting an eating disorder, or they just, they did it for the 21 days or whatever, and then they just went back to their lifestyle that they were leading before. There was no long-term sustainable change. And then oftentimes you, you ask these doctors or naturopaths or whoever is advising you to do a detox, please tell me what exactly you're detoxing me from. And a lot of times they could say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're eating all these processed foods and it's, they're horrible for you and your gut is probably just completely out of whack. Well, I hate to tell you, but your body was designed with kidneys and liver to cleanse your body. 
And if you are eating on a relatively healthy scale with fiber, that your kidneys and your liver do a pretty good job of filtering what they need to filter. So some people might say, oh, well, there's environmental toxins and uh, you're eating excessive sugars and, you know, you're drinking alcohol. I get it. Okay. But again, you don't need a detox to get rid of those things. You could just learn on learn how to diet or learn a lifestyle that is more sustainable and healthy. You don't need any hundred dollar programs or multi hundred dollars of programs and a doctor to tell you that. So what is macro based planning? Macro based diet planning is focusing on your macro nutrients, basically your proteins, your carbs and your fats and the total amounts that you need throughout the day to achieve your goals. Now your goals might be for fat loss, maintenance, lean muscle gain, muscle gain, and uh, overall lifestyle change. So basically what you do is you hire a coach or you find an app that does macro-based planning and you tell your coach or your app what you want to do. Like I said, fat loss, maintenance, lean muscle gain. You could do aggressive uh, fat loss, which is not recommended. And you could choose like how, how long of a time period do you want to do this for? Now, some people want to do it ad infinitum and they just enter their numbers and they just want to keep a healthy lifestyle, a healthy body, and you do it that way. So some of my clients prefer set meal plans. They want to know exactly what they're eating, what amounts. They don't want to have to think about it. So what I do as a, as a coach is I will provide a monthly meal plan and based upon their goals, I will change their macronutrients if I deem it appropriate every couple weeks. So let's say their uh, goal is fat loss and I see I create a meal plan for them and they are not making any progress. Well, I'll go and look at their macronutrients. I'll make some adjustments to make sure that they're on target for the goals that we set for them. So a lot of times if I'm dieting a competitor, I will diet them over the course of 18 to 21 weeks to make sure that they have a slow fat loss because you don't want to do any extreme fat losses because then you become catabolic, AKA losing the hard earned muscle that you're trying to build. Same thing with fat loss. If you are just an overweight person, you want to make sure that your fat loss is sustainable and that you don't hit any plateaus. If you have some major fat loss or major losses in the beginning, oftentimes that's water weight and not necessarily fat. And if you do it too extreme, you may hit a wall way too soon. So again, macronutrient based diet planning is a long term lifestyle solution. It's not a quick fix. So other clients of mine prefer to have their macronutrients per meal. So I will tell them they need to eat um, certain protein, carbs, and fats for breakfast, certain protein, carbs, and fats for pre-workout, post-workout, dinner, a snack, etc. And then they choose what they want to eat. And they, as long as they hit their numbers per meal, then they're good. Now, what I'd like to say about macro-based nutrient diet planning is that you could pursue a number of alternative diets such as vegetarian, pescatarian, vegan, gluten-free, or non-processed. You could pursue a number of alternative lifestyles and still pursue macronutrient-based diet planning. Again, it's about hitting numbers. Now, you probably won't be able to do a ketogenic-based diet on this because you're missing the carbohydrate portion of this, but a lot of the other diets, you can do it. I personally am a pescatarian, so I've been using this method for at least 15 years, and like I said, it works for me. I have vegetarian clients, I have vegan clients, I have gluten-free clients. They can all use the macronutrient-based diet planning for life. I would like to say that you can eat exactly, well, you can eat what you want. Macronutrient based planning allows you to eat what you want within reason. And I really champion this type of dieting 
because it allows you to be like a normal person. I hate to say it like that, but if I want to have chocolate, I have chocolate. If I want to have pizza, I have pizza. If I want to have ice cream, I have ice cream. It's not restrictive to where you want to develop an eating disorder because you can't have a certain food. You just basically have to weigh and measure it and you can have whatever you want within your macronutrient profile. So it's not like you could eat an entire pepperoni pizza and expect to hit your macronutrient profile because you'll be over on fats and carbs and you won't get enough protein or you'll blow all of your macros for the entire day in one meal. And obviously that's not what you want. But macronutrient-based diet planning is not restrictive in the fact that it says you can't have caffeine, you can't eat chocolate, you can't have uh, fruit, uh, you can't have bread, you, whatever you like. Because when you start going into the restrictive side of dieting or the bro side that they've, you know, the bodybuilding world has labeled it as basically tilapia, asparagus, no fruit. Uh, fish during the last weeks of prep, boiled chicken, no seasoning, no dressing. I mean, there are extreme diets like you wouldn't believe, like even the grapefruit diet or just, or the no fruit, no processed diet. I mean, there are so many extreme diets out there. Again, that is not long-term and it's not sustainable because if you didn't have an eating disorder before, you might develop one by following a super restrictive diet for a number of years. And you may destroy your metabolism in the process. So, you know, it's like when somebody tells you that you can't have something, then all of a sudden you start craving it. Uh, it, it kind of, the ultra restrictive diets, even for the most hardcore bodybuilder person that has the biggest of goals, if they're told you cannot have XYZ and you have to do this for 18 months there are competitors that as soon as they step off stage start shoving donuts and candy and all the stuff they couldn't have when they were on their ultra restrictive diet program now I'm not going to say that things towards stage time don't get really tough for competitors especially when they want to get lean like ultra stage lean I'm not going to say that, you know, you're still going to be eating ice cream and candy up until the day you hit, hit the stage. I mean, you can, but it's going to be way less than what you would like. But again, long-term sustainability. And a lot of people don't want to compete. A lot of people aren't bodybuilders. They just want a, a diet plan for life. A diet plan that they can manipulate their numbers based upon their goals, whether they want to lose weight whether they want to put on muscle or just maintain the physique they have. That is the beauty of a macronutrient based diet plan. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions or if you'd like to try a macro based diet plan, you can email me at warriorathletica at gmail.com and I'd be happy to help you out and um, help you find the most sustainable solution for you. I hope you found this informative. Until next time, stay informed, stay vigilant, ever forward.